So believe it or not, people still do hemiarthroplasties for osteoarthritis. When? Usually if there's a smooth glenoid, or more commonly if you have a very young, high-demand patient who's really not willing to accept either, uh, you know, who is willing to accept some degree of pain in exchange for the avoidance of glenoid-sided wear problems, right? And I would ask you, in a patient who's going to need a future revision, what's better? A total shoulder that fails from poly disease or a hemiarthroplasty that fails with a very sclerotic, painful glenoid? And as we start to think this through in our 45 and 50-year-olds, what it's going to be like when they're 60, 70, and 80, that's where I'm thinking. I'm never telling the patient this is their last operation. So as we look at the humerus and we say, okay, if we're focusing on the humerus, what have been the major advancements in understanding humeral anatomic reconstructions? Well, first, it's making them more anatomic. The evolution of the stem and, and modular designs have allowed us to become more anatomic. The stems have become shorter. And probably when they're shorter, they become more anatomic because we can align the humeral head better. And then, of course, the introduction of alternative bearing surfaces. So these are the three themes that we've seen over the last probably 10 years in the evolution of the anatomic humerus. Mike Pearl taught us years ago that regardless of the head size, there's a ratio of the head height to the radius of curvature, and it's a three to four relationship. And so it allowed us to start to try to really pay attention to anatomic reconstructions. And Joe Iannotti taught us that actually, if you just take a perfect circle and you hit three points on an AP view or even looking straight on at the humerus itself, you can actually create what should be anatomic reconstruction. But if you look radiographically at what we've done, 31% of stemmed hemiarthroplasties and 65% of resurfacing overstuffed, that we don't get it right very commonly. But we want to. We want to get the anatomic relationships because we think that's important. And so now there are head sizes and modular junctions and all these things allow you to get there. And I think we're pretty good now.